In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today, we read from the Gospel of St. Luke, where Christ is speaking to the people in parables. And oftentimes, our Lord speaks to get points across through parables. And Kenna teaches us a lesson in how to speak the language of the audience. You know, when Christ was with fishermen, he used to talk about fishing. When he used to hang out with farmers, he talked about farming. Here, our Lord Jesus Christ were, seems like he's speaking to a bunch of people either farming or related to the field of farming. And he was giving them this parable about the word of God and the sower. He said there's this sower, this farmer who had these seeds and he was throwing these seeds on, up on the field. And it seems like the field <coughs> or the seeds fell on different kinds of ground. It fell on concrete where basically as soon as the seed fell, the birds came and ate it. Some of the seeds fell on rocks where it started to grow a little bit, started to have some root. But as soon as the sun started to shine, the plant immediately died. Some fell on basically thorns. Thorns is basically, think of it as weed. You know, sometimes you, if you garden, is if you put a seed and it has surrounded by other plants, such as weed, what happened is the, the plants uh, around the seed suck all the water and the nutrients, right? And so that the seed is not receiving all the right amount of water and nutrients that it needs for it to grow. And because of that, it, does, it either does not grow or it's very unhealthy because it's not getting enough. And the last, we call it a thorn. And the fourth is the good ground where basically when the seed falls on it and... Um, it grows and it brings forth 30, 60, and 100 fold return of crop. This is a parable that Christ wanted to illustrate the power of his word. His word is a seed, and the soils are the different kinds of parts. And today, by the grace of God, we want us to contemplate a little bit about this parable and really the beauty of the seed and the power, or the beauty of the sower and the power of, the, of that seed. First thing, we notice that the generosity of the sower, the generosity of the sower. Okay, the sower, he knew he deliberately was throwing seeds everywhere, right? Of course, the sower is hoping that most of the seeds would fall on good ground. But nevertheless, the seeds still continue to throw seeds, even though he knew that some of the seeds will fall on not good ground, whether it's stony or rocky or concrete. And this kind of reveals kind of the nature of the sower and who is the sower is our lord christ right our god is essentially always communicating with us god is always communicating with us he's always sending us messages always he's always sending us messages that he's here that he's hearing us that he is with us that he loves us unfortunately right now because of what's happening in the world and I have been speaking more a lot with people lately. Um, a lot of people are living in thorny, thorny grounds. Just because of all the news that they are hearing and they're being completely consumed with the news. Friends, I want to warn you. The world right now is lacking peace. And yes, we must be aware of what's happening. But I suggest and advise everyone not to be consumed by the news because this world is very very broken right now it has always been broken but now it's getting more and more broken so my advice to you as my friends is to stay away from this news especially disturbing news as much as you can because this news makes you live a very very dark space right and it it reveals more about the ugliness of humanity and what men can really do to harm each other. So stay away as much as possible. Do not be completely consumed. Because that will strip all kind of hope from your heart. So number one is the generosity of the sower. Our Lord Christ, my friends, is always talking and communicating with us. He is always willing to, to knock. Uh, we love this verse. I'm standing at the door knocking. Whoever opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. Our Lord Christ will always, will always knock at our doors, will always approach us. This could be uh, approaching us through um, uh, 
a message of hope. It could be approaching you through a blessing you have received. It could be a, a, a knock on the door by, or some people call it a wink from heaven. A wink from heaven. It's like someone uh, showing you something that is good in you, appreciative, uh, showing, seeing some good in this world, seeing something good that happened. These are all ways God is communicating with us, saying, I am here. Good still exists. Holiness still exists. That's what we have to be aware. Number two is the nature of the seed. Now, does anyone know how big the mustard seed is? Anyone know? Anyone seen by the mustard seed? Anyone? It's literally a dot. Get a pencil right, and make a dot on a piece of paper. This is how big a mustard how this is how big the mustard seed is. Do a mustard seed, seed and a tree. And you will see the difference. It's literally a seed, a dot, that when it's, it's planted, it grows and becomes this ginormous tree. Enormous tree. And this scanner, it's, it's, it's a beautiful reflection of the word of God. This word of God that we have in our hands has ability to grow has ability to take root and grow into a huge tree to support animals and support even humans and becomes an essential part of nature. This is the word of God. Sometimes I don't feel we are taking the word of God seriously. We do not have a good relationship with the word of God and scripture. We do not know what the Bible is telling us, even though it is the constitution of life. It tells us how we're supposed to be living our life. St. Paul says the word of God is quick and powerful, like a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword. It's like a scalpel, razor sharp. It knows exactly where to cut and how to cut. It knows exactly how to separate you know, the good and from bad. So what is the relationship with the seed? Am I taking it in? Am I reflecting? Am I reflecting upon it? Am I feeding it? Am I giving it nutrients? Am I taking care of it? Or is it just it's a relationship that I have with just any random text? A uh, few years ago, I was at uh, Eats Coffee. Sometimes I like to stay, hang out there um, to study. And uh, I saw this man. Of course, he saw my robe. So he goes, excuse me, sir, are you a priest? I said, yes, I am a priest. And it's like, hey, you know, we started to talk. And... Um, mm -hmm. He brought this bag, and his bag was full of small books. He said, Father, let's check out my, this is what I do now. He's retired. He's been doing this for the last 10 years, where he basically buys books, Christian books, and he goes to strangers, and he knocks on the shoulders. He's, he starts a conversation with them, and he gives them the books. He said, Why didn't you read this? I, I, want to say, I was really, really amazed. I, was re I really admired him. And he said to me, he told me this, you know what, Father, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing like the sower. So what do you mean you're doing like a sower? Like I am taking the seeds and I'm throwing it in the world. And you know what he tells me? He tells me this experience. Like, you know what, Father? Sometimes years, years after, I see random people coming and, you know, tapping on my shoulder. Hey, he's like, hey, James, remember remember me? He's like, I can't really remember you. I see you. He gave me that one book. And that book, but one book that changed my life. Now I am a Christian. Now I have a relationship with Christ. He is being like a sower. This is how powerful God is. The Bible, my friends, is, this is one of them. If, if someone says, what's special about your Christianity? I talked about it last Monday. What's special about Christianity is we have scriptures. Scriptures that is very much alive. It's written by over 40 authors, almost 2,000 years old, but still very impactful. And still united in spirits. They, all the authors are writing about the same thing, different ways. But all of them are sharing the same spirit. This Bible, this scripture that we have, is changing life up until today. I sometimes feel we are as Christians. We do not have a solid relationship with the scriptures. We do not know what the scriptures are telling us, how to live. Number three. So number one, we said the nature of the sower is he's a very generous man who throws his seeds everywhere. We talked about the nature of the seed being this powerful seed that can grow and change lives and become this huge tree. You want to also talk a little bit about the nature of spirituality. 
just like there are different seasons in farming, spirituality also comes with different seasons. Sometimes people come to me very frustrated. Like, I'm not feeling anything now. You know what? My spiritual life is very, very stagnant. I don't know where, my friend, you are in the winter season. There's just a storm. It's just cold out there for you right now. A be of good cheer. You're still alive. You're still alive. There's sometimes us as Christians, we get confused, confused between spirituality and feelings. In Christianity, sometimes Christians get confused between feelings and spirituality. Yeah, I'm feeling spiritual. My, my, my prayers are very heated. My heart is very heated. You know, I'm, I'm praying and, you know, tears are coming down. I feel very, very hot on the inside. Right? And... And even though we do believe in it, right? And we call this God's visit, visiting grace. It's a visiting grace. Sometimes God allows you to taste, taste this heat in relationship. But sometimes you're not going to feel anything, right? And that feeling does not correlate with spirituality. Sometimes, if you read the Psalms, at least David, the prophet, he was always in different seasons. Take it out. Some Psalms, they are dark. He's like lamenting, Lord, why did you forsake me? Why did you leave me? Where are you? My enemies are, are, are everywhere around me. Seems you have forgotten me. That was the dark season. You are, you are my help, Lord. You did not leave me. You are my help and my strength. You have become to me uh, a joyful salvation. Right? This is why we like we like the Psalms. Read the Psalms, guys. Read the Psalms. Because David, he was living this through different seasons. One day when you're reading, your season is matching David's season. David David will teach you how to pray. So have a good relationship with the Psalms. Because the Psalms will reflect the reality of humanity. As humans, we're always going to be like this. Always. Always and forever. Sometimes we're going to feel things are good. Sometimes we're not going to feel things are going too bad. Always. That's to be of good cheer. We stick with the program. If you look at any plants, you know, I have a, a fig tree. And right now, it's the season where the leaves are all falling. You look at the plant, it's is very depressing. Right? It's like, a few, it's like a bunch of sticks and nothing else around it. Right? It looks very, very, it looks almost dead. But we still have to take care of her. Right? We, still have it. we still have to put the water, we still give it the right fertilizers, we still continue with the program. In our spiritual lives as Christians, we must continue our spiritual struggle. Meaning, when you come to church, you seek advice, you seek discipleship, you seek mentorship, you become part and take part of the sacrament. I repeat it every single sermon. Please, please do not be alone. Do not be alone. Do not leave the church. Do not live by yourself. Do not live without discipleship. Do not live without mentorship. Do not live without confession. Please take care of your confessions. Come because confession is an opportunity for you to come and evaluate your soil. Why is my tree not growing? It's most likely my soil, my soil is not good. Or I'm not feeding it properly. Some people we see they have gone to church for years and years, some 10, 20, 30 years. Dear Habibi, why? Why are you preventing yourself from this great sacrament? Why are you not here? Do not leave the church. Do not leave the body. Do not look at the body. Do not look at any of them. Just look at Christ. Look at Christ and what Christ has to offer. Right? Yes, we are sinful men. Yes, we are sinful. And we are struggling just like all of you. Yes, do not forsake the church. Do not leave the church. Come and be part of this community. Come and build a relationship. Come and serve. Spirituality and season. So we are in our spiritual life. We will have different seasons. Best stay under the umbrella of the church. We will have winters. We will have storms. We know sometimes we feel we're going to have no kind of fruit whatsoever. Sometimes God allows us to go through seasons because this is a time of reflection. 
a lot of people have come to speak with us as priests. Things are let's let's look what's happening. And when times are dark, it's time for us to sit and to reflect. So yes, it is part of our spiritual program. What kind of soil are we? What it's a question for both you and I. Am I concrete? If I'm concrete, what is happening? Am I hard full of hard rocks? Is my heart full of resentment and judgment and jealousy? These are rocks. Is my heart full of hate? These are rocks. Is my heart full of doubt and confusion? These are rocks. Is my heart thorny, meaning I'm so distracted with what's happening? And less distracted about life, this is thorns. All of these have solutions. As we must sit, and you must sit with your spiritual father to come up with a plan to prepare your soil. May God give us grace. May God prepare our hearts for us to receive his soil. May God work in us. He's waiting to put his seed in us so that his seed can grow. And to not just impact us, it impacts about people around us. May God Give us the strength and the wisdom and glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen.